And finally, in this section, I want to talk about a few other tools that I have on the phone. Now, I haven't talked about audio and I haven't talked about writing, but these two things can be done on the phone. For audio, Hindenburg is probably the most famous and, and this is a free version of what they do, so well worth downloading and having a look at. You can see my audio levels there, which I can up and down depending on how, how much I want. I can also put markers in and I can then output the, the uh, recording that I've made. So a very nice little recording application, particularly if you have an external microphone that you can attach to it. Also, Pages is probably the best word processor that you can use, and this has the additional benefit nowadays of syncing directly to your account, which means other people can access it as you write. Now, the problem, of course, is when you're writing a document is actually being able to edit it uh, quickly or write on it quickly and for that I would suggest a Bluetooth keyboard like this one that I'm showing you here which makes life a lot easier for writing text however the more you do that the more extra applications you're bringing then you might as well bring a full computer. Some others just here just to, to take note of SV is a undercover ethics must be taken into account here but this shows you um, a calendar screen, you can choose which screen you want it to show, but actually as I tap it, it starts recording video. So I can look like that I am checking my calendar while at the same time I'm actually recording video, and that's the video um, saved using the back camera, and there's lots of settings and other things on that. And you can up and down the, the opacity um, of how much that uh, is showing. But effectively, if you want to go undercover or you, you want to film something without people thinking that you're filming at the time, uh, you can obviously take off the red light and the beep as well if you want. Okay, apart from SV, I have, a, this is just my camera manual. Um, and I find this a really useful thing to have occasionally when I get stuck and I don't know I want to do something or my camera is suddenly locked and I don't know what to do. Having the camera manual, I also uh, keep my style guide here from my media company is kept on the phone as well. And you can have all sorts of documents. So don't forget that um, uh, if you have... Uh, equipment that's new to you or you're not particularly familiar with and you have a guidebook you don't have to carry the book you can po possibly download the manual and put it onto your phone and then it's very very easy to access it and the same goes um, with style guides as well if you're unsure how to write a particular word it can be put onto your phone and make things very easy for you translate is really really useful again working in foreign countries that I do a lot of uh, I'm always turning to this to be able to quickly send an email to somebody in a different language or to translate something that somebody sent to me and just see exactly what they say or even take a picture of a sign and get it translated, uh, and maybe a bus sign or something to, to be sure that I'm on the right bus. All sorts of things you can do with translation applications. This is just one of them, the Google one. And then finally, the weather app. The weather app is so useful for checking that you're not going to get drenched uh, when you're going out on a shoot. And if you are, you're taking the right equipment, the right clothing. And again, particularly if you're going on an international assignment to somewhere where you're not sure what the weather's going to be, having that there ready to go, telling you what's happening on an hour by hour basis can really help make sure that you get the shot that you need and you don't ruin all your equipment. Also very useful if you're following weather related stories, typhoons, and, and big storms, etc. And that is the end of the mobile journalism section. I hope you found it useful.